we come together and it was under the direction, if you will. Um, I, I don't have all of the history and I was thinking um, just on yesterday that we need to have all of the history written out. Um, there was a gentleman by the name of Reverend Flood that uh, commissioned and called for Apostle Eugene and Pastor Patrice. Let's celebrate him one more time, if you will. Thank God for you, sir. Um, to, to bring a community of churches together to celebrate um, the Good Friday service and uh, commemorate um, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here we are today celebrating his resurrection, aren't we? Yeah. Amen. We're celebrating his resurrection. So um, one of the, um, I guess, the founding members, Reverend Parker Jones of Faith Presbyterian Church just down the street, um, she's retiring this year and um, she's opted to ask us to take the baton and run with it and make sure that um, the commitment that was made from the beginning never dies. It's so important that certain things uh, don't, we don't allow them to die um, because it's for the uplift of the total man and uh, community engagement, community work, community spiritual uplift is critical to the next generation. And we have a responsibility to keeping it going. So I want to make sure that we do that. And I want to thank um, the hospitality team for the great work that they did in serving, yes, in serving um, our guests. Um, I received the message as early as this morning, thanking us for the great hospitality that we showed. You know, last time I checked, our savior was very hospitable. Amen. Amen. So we are to represent him in the earth. So I want you to just grab a hold of your neighbor's hand. And, you know, we're post COVID now. We can touch each other as we like to do. And first and foremost, say hello to the person that you're whose hand that you're holding. If you haven't already spoken to them. Amen. Amen. Again, we celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the reason that we're here. We are here to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would, just bow your heads with me right now. Father, we just thank you for this time of gathering. Lord, I know that the hands that I hold represent a son of the most high God. Lord, I just call and stop by just to say hello to you this morning. Hello, Lord. You are my friend. You know, uh, we're breaking down the, the, the traditions and the, the walls of denominationalism that called me not to be able to go to my father, but in a certain type of way. Father, we're just calling you daddy today. Lord, the songs that we sing, Lord, it's to give your name the glory to worship you today, Father. Lord, we want to say thank you for this time that you allow us even to breathe. Lord, we want to just give honor to your name today. Lord, we seek your guidance as the word of God is unpacked in front of our eyes and in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, we gather here today to lift your name on high again. Lord, we turn our hearts to you, Lord. Lord, we turn our ears over to you. Lord, we turn our eyes over to you, O oh God. Lord, we turn our ability to touch over to you. Lord, let us taste your presence even now. Lord, these becomes just a few of the petitions of our hearts today, O oh God, as we express our love for you. Lord, take every one, O oh God. O oh God, mold us, O oh God, into the image and the imagery of which you desire, Father. Let us be a reflection of you in the earth, Father. Lord, we place our flesh under subjection even now. Lord, our minds, our thought processes, O oh God, we turn them over to you, Father. Lord, whatever our plans are for later on today, oh God, Lord, we put them aside to give you our very best today, God. Our undivided attention, Father, we are so grateful to you for having died, oh God, and lay down your life even. And God, you chose to pick it back up again so that we could have the right to the tree of life and be able to spend eternity with you, Lord. Lord, we receive your download from on high. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Oh, to God be the glory. Yes. We just want to welcome all of our first-time visitors. And uh, 
all of you that are watching via our streaming broadcast on behalf of our founder and overseer, Apostle Eugene Shepherd, we just say thank you for choosing to just come and hang out with us today. And man, this is a great place to hang out, isn't it? Man, just smile at somebody today. It's important. Smile at them. Let them know. Show them your, uh, your teeth, however many you may have. I recognize that many of us have some plans for later on today, and I do not intend on keeping you beyond what the amount of time that God allots. Amen? See, that's a nice way of saying I'm not responsible for how long I keep you here today. But nonetheless, we're going to get right in the word of God. I penned some notes here with the intent of staying on topic, and I pray that your ears will be opened to hearing them. Um, we're going to get in and stay in the scripture for a few minutes and hopefully, not hopefully, I don't want to say hopefully, I'm confident that what God has to say through his word will minister to your needs. I'm so grateful to see all of our young people, our children. It's so good to see children in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. To God be the glory. Some of what I may say may be a little bit... Um, may skim over the top of some heads, but nonetheless, there is enough meat in the word of God that you can take uh, what you can, like the old preachers always say, take the meat and throw away the bones. In the book of Revelation, we are presented with a vivid imagery and uh, prophetic messages that unveils the ultimate victory of Christ over evil and the establishment of his eternal kingdom. We're looking to see the eternal kingdom of God in operation. I would say, first and foremost, the revelation of Jesus Christ reminds us of his divine nature and the sovereignty over all of creation. Now, those words ought not to scare you at all. Let me say it again. The revelation of Jesus Christ reminds us of his divine nature and his sovereignty, his rule over all of creation. I want you to confess something with me here today. We live at the level of our revelation. I don't know about anybody else, but I am confident to a person, you live at the level of your revelation. If your confession and your uh, lifestyle is not aligned properly, then I'm still saying that you are living at the level of your revelation. So there are times that we will use words. There are times that we will say things because we heard somebody else say them. You know, it's clicheic. It's the nice thing to say. But we really and truly have not caught the revelation. Or if we caught the revelation, we really don't believe in what it is that has been revealed. So I live at the level of my revelation. I embark on some projects around the house. Not because it's something to do, but there is something that God has placed in me. And there's something that is in me innately that I want to see a standard. And I want to live at the standard that has been revealed to me. When we come into the church, the grounds look beautiful, didn't they? Some of you may have paid attention to him. Why? Because we have arrived at a place where certain things are mediocre. And certain things represent the kingdom of God in its entirety, in its totality. And because it does that and it has been revealed to us, we're going to enact those things that have been revealed to us. When I see certain activities and certain behaviors there are times when i get frustrated but i've got to go to the word of god and be reminded that it's at the level of the revelation that the individual is performing nothing more and nothing less as i get back to my notes it says he is not merely a historical figure or a moral teacher 
Some people have attributed Christ to morality. He transcends morality. With him, we should have morals. Yes. But with him, there's a revelation of eternity that is unfolded to us. <clears throat> Says this historical figure is not about moral, but the son of God who reigns over the earth and over the heavens. That is the revelation that each of us should have today. That it is God supreme that we serve. It's in Christ whom we believe. And it's at the essence of who he is and who has risen from the grave that we're celebrating here today. This revelation calls us to acknowledge his lordship in our lives and to surrender to his will. To a person that has had the word of God revealed to them, we will surrender to the will of God. I remember so clearly, you've heard my testimony in the past, when the truth of the word of God arrived at my doorstep. I grew up in the church. I was a good church boy. I used to be an altar boy even. Served the priest. Drank the wine. Oh, that's right. I wasn't supposed to touch the wine at that young age. But nonetheless, it was not until the revelation of who Christ was and who Christ is in my life that I came to know him as my Lord and Savior. There's someone sitting next to you today who may not have the same level of revelation that you have. But by the grace of God, through his word, he is made accessible to all of us his word of God, the word of God. He has made accessible to all of us his revelation. So how are we going to get to that revelation? We've got to delve into the word of God and having him unfolded to us. The newscasters today, they will talk about the resurrection. But are they speaking about it from the resurrection, the resurrection from the standpoint of reporting the news? Or are they speaking about it from the revelation of who Christ really and truly is? Unless we can speak about who Christ is, do we really have the revelation? All we're doing is parroting what someone else has said. If I was to continue, the revelation of Jesus Christ offers hope in the midst of chaos and uncertainty. In a world plagued by suffering, injustice, and strife, we find comfort in the promise of his soon return. The book of Revelation continues. It assures us that ultimately goodness will triumph over evil. There's so much going on in the world today. Good and evil are consistently having a battle. There's some of us that do not understand that in the end we win. I am here today to remind you and to point out to you that don't know it, that in the end we win. So I'm going to cross over, if I haven't crossed over already, I'm going to cross over to the winning side. Confess to somebody who says, I'm on the winning side. Amen. Goodness will triumph over evil. Light will dispel darkness. And God will wipe away every tear from our eye. Moreover, the revelation of Jesus Christ compels us to live holy and righteous lives as we anticipate his return. That is a requirement, saints of God. Holiness is still right. Holiness is still right. Regardless of the, the complacency of our society and the dumbing down of scripture, if you will, holiness is still right. I don't care how many Bibles you sell. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, hell is your portion. We are called to persevere in faith, to stand firm in the face of adversity, and to remain steadfast in our commitment to Jesus Christ. We're reminded that our actions have eternal consequences and that we must strive to honor God and to do all that we can do to please him. Now, this uh, doing that I'm talking about here is not a predication on your eternity. No, because you can't do enough to please God. The requirement is that we accept him as our Lord and Savior. 
but as the continuation of that acceptance, I would want to please the one that is preserving my soul. I would want to live a life that is pleasing to him in accordance to the word of God if he has promised to take me back to his eternity. And in between now and then, there are manifold blessings that are going to be unfolded in the lives of the believers. There are manifold blessings that are going to be unfolded and I would encourage us to want to live a life that is pleasing to God. Just as John was called to proclaim the message of hope to the churches, so are we called to be ambassadors of Christ in a broken world. Our next series that we will be speaking on will be about capacity, the capacity of the believer, supernatural capacity, developing, cultivating supernatural capacity. We've got to have this wherewithal to allow God to fill us even more. For some, the filling will be the first time. That is in the Holy, with the Holy Spirit. We are entrusted with the task of shining his light into dark places. We are entrusted to extend his grace to the lost and inviting others to experience the joy of salvation. While we are extending this invitation, if you will, it's the Holy Spirit that is drawing them. So when you get an opportunity to minister to someone, take it not for granted. The revelation of Jesus Christ is not merely a vision of the future, but a present reality that shapes our lives and transforms our very hearts. My title today, beyond that introduction, is He Got Up. I sent out a message early this morning to some folks, and I told them to be quiet. Don't tell anybody. He got up. And in so doing, I began to get the responses that I was hoping that I would get. I'll paraphrase the responses that I got. How in the world... Can you tell me that Jesus got up and I keep quiet? It's impossible. You will find in the scripture while Jesus was alive and he was performing miracles, he would tell them, tell no one. Am I correct? After his resurrection and he appeared to Mary, he said to Mary, go and tell. So now, while this preacher might ask you or might have been playing a little game is say, be quiet about it. I pray to God that you're not quiet about it today. You're declaring on the rooftop, on the mountaintop that he got up and he got up with all power in his hands. There are some people who seem to keep Jesus crucified dead and buried except for two days out of the year. That is on Christmas when they celebrate his birth and on Easter when we celebrate the rising from the dead. But the essence of his resurrection can be found in the revelation of who he is. He is risen. So when I know and I understand that he is risen, he comes alive, not only in the world, but he comes alive on the inside of me. When I accept him as my Lord and Savior, I am promised with an eternity to spend with him. And it's in that eternity that I'm alive and alive forevermore. Many refuse to acknowledge the Son of God. They talk about God and they talk about being God conscious. But they ignore the sun. And I wanted to say that in ignoring the sun, they are truly ignoring the father. The speakers on this past Friday did a phenomenal job of putting the father and the son together. Awesome uh, presentations. I continue my thought with, because it is in knowing the son and having a true relationship with him that the father is revealed. It's only through the son that the father is revealed. Because without a revelation of who the son is, how can we claim to know the father? When Jesus arrived on the scene in Caesarea Philippi, he confronts his disciple and asks them, who do men say that I am? 
Who do men say that I am? Let's look at the scripture. It says, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And the question is so relevant to today. Who do you say that I am? It doesn't matter what I say. But who do you say? Because each of, each of us must have a personal experience with this one that is risen. Without the personal experience, what is it that you're claiming? What is it that you're celebrating? What is it that you have to hang your life on? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, this impressed Jesus so much. You are Christ, the son of the living God. Say that with me, please. You are, you are Christ, Christ, the son, the son of, the of the living God. This really impressed Jesus. Jesus answered and said to them, to him, blessed are you, Bar Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Flesh and blood, all of this preaching would be in vain if you do not have a personal relationship with the Father through the Son. If the revelation of who Christ is and his connection with the Father and being the Father is not unfolded into our hearts, then we're living in vain. My job today is to introduce you to the Son so that you could come to know the Father. And in accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior and accepting him as the partner of your sin and accepting him as your healer, you too will have this relationship that we're speaking of today. Verse 18 says, and I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock and on this revelation, on this word of God as to who Christ is. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Isn't that an awesome word? To me, that's an awesome word. I don't need co-signers to catch this revelation. I caught it a long time ago. Upon this revelation, do you get, are you getting it today? It's on this revelation as to who Christ is that your salvation is hinged. It's on this revelation that he got up from the grave that your salvation hinges. It says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Saints and friends, I could park right there in that 19th verse and build a whole theological sermon about binding and loosing. But that's not what this is about here. The power is not us. The power is in and through Christ and the revelation that we have. We can live at a, a mediocre level and say, oh, I'm saved, I'm happy, I'm going to heaven. But how about if you live a life that is so pleasing to God that he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. There are some blessings that come with serving God. I heard one preacher one time says, you don't, uh, salvation doesn't allow you to get things, but things come with your salvation. Then he commanded his disciples that they should not tell anyone that he was Jesus the Christ. You see what's happening before his resurrection. We want you to keep this on the hush-hush. We don't want to make too much noise. But saints of God, let me be the one to stand here and tell you that he is risen. I don't know how you feel about him having gotten up out of the grave, but I feel real good about it in my sanctified soul. I feel good, so good that I want to shout on top of the building and declare that he is risen and he will lives forever and ever again. If I was to digress for just a little while longer, right after he tells them not to tell, he goes on to give them additional revelation in that book of St. Matthew. Jesus begins to tell them about his death and his resurrection. 
Isn't that awesome? The revelation comes, then I'm going to die. But the truth is, when you get the revelation, you realize and you come to the realization that he did not die as, as in to stay dead. He died so that he could live again and live forever. The same thing for you and me, that when we surrender our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our whole being over to Christ, we are dead to the things of this world so that we can live with Christ forevermore. I want to move this fast forward here just a little while. Jesus said something that we all need to come to a full grip of. He says, no man cometh to the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. All power is given to me. That is who got up from the grave. All power got up from the grave. None of the other prophets could say this. Malachi couldn't say it. Zephaniah couldn't say it. Obadiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, none of them could say this. They didn't have the opportunity to live the kind of life that we have here today. They saw it in the future, but they couldn't say it through confession like we can. He got up from the grave. With all power in his hands. My friends, I want to walk us through a couple of passages in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Let's go there real quickly. In the first 11 verses of the book of Corinthians, a good commentary writes, he points out that the doctrine of Christ and his death and resurrection is the foundation of every true believer in Jesus Christ. So if you were to walk away from the church service today and, ask, and they ask you, what did the preacher preach about? He preached about the doctrine of the resurrection. And in that, and in believing in Christ's resurrection, I am therefore saved. In believing that he got up for my sins and his body was bruised, he died. All of that was just for you and for me. Yes, he was fulfilling the scriptures. But guess what? He was fulfilling the scriptures so that you could have the right to the tree of life. When they ask you, what do you believe? I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I confess him as my Lord and Savior today. That's where we are, saints and friends, that God wants us to embrace this and spread this truth. Go and tell somebody that Jesus Christ is risen. If we were to remove this, then all of our hopes for eternity would just wane away. Literally, if you remove the resurrection, your hope for eternity, what do you have? Nothing. If I look around this building and see so many of you here today, I am grateful to God for the revelation having reached you. My job if you will, is to continue to nurture that into the fulfillment of what God has called you to be. I desire to be the best that God wants me to be so that you can be the best that God wants you to be also. You know, there's so much to be said about preaching the word of God. There's so much to be said about how we should live our lives. And it's in that revelation. It's in that place where God has us and he's nurturing, he's molding us. You might have different thoughts. Let me preach to you your thought levels in your minds. You might have all these things going on and you're wondering, am I saved? I'm a, what is my relationship like? You know, there are all kinds of things going on. What is my purpose in living this life? I am here today that you came to this earth to receive the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can go back and spend eternity with him. But in the meantime, somebody shout in the meantime. In the meantime, in the meantime I want you to live the best life that you can here in the earth. Hmm? Hallelujah. You know, the book of Isaiah points out something. 
to us 700 years before Christ was born, Isaiah prophesied that he would be born. That's revelation knowledge. How do you know that he lives on the inside of you today by you telling somebody that he is alive forevermore? I have so much that I want to share with you, but I'm being pricked in my heart to just pause right here and give those that have an opportunity, give them the opportunity that is to rededicate and recommit. If you will stand, I'm going to pause there. I have so much. God is doing some great things in the midst of us people. If there's one person, I want your undivided attention now. If there's one person in the house that said, Pastor Cliff, this revelation and this resurrection message is pricking my heart. And I want to rededicate my life over to God now. I want you to slip your hand up real high. Don't be afraid. Slip your hand up if there's one person. Thank you. If there's another person that wants to rededicate your life to the Lord, I believe that God brought you here for a reason. Don't look around these people and, and their fine attire. It's not about that. My Bible makes it perfectly clear to me that I come as you are, but you're not going to stay as you come. That life transforming power of God is in this place today. And I believe that God sent you here for a reason. That's the reason why this sermon has gone the way it did. I know without a shadow of a doubt that God has something special in store for you and your family daughter. I, I know it like I know my name. I pray that this commitment that you're making, this rededication, if you will, will be one that will last you for the rest of your life. Amen. If you will, just, just grab your family by the hand right there for me, please. Just grab a hold of your family. It's the hand. Your daughter, is that uh, who you brought with you? Okay, just, you got a hand? Okay, all right, good. Uh, she's, so, she's right there, so I couldn't tell. Amen. And Brother Jeff, if y'all could move to the right just a little bit. I want to look him. What's your name, please? Tamika, Sister Tamika. I call you sister because I receive you as my sister. I don't pick on you because you're here. The Holy Spirit drew you here today. I really believe that. You, couldn't, you could not have even stayed away if you wanted to. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know the need farther, more than I can speak the need, Lord. This young lady has come through time, Lord, to be connected and reconnected to you on this Resurrection Sunday. Father, I decree the great things over her life. Lord, her family, her extended family, Lord Jesus, will come to know you through her testimony. Lord, from this day forward, her life will never be the same. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. My Bible tells me that repent and be baptized. Be you truly converted. Be baptized for the remission of your sins. Father, this heart is pure towards you now. We know it like we know our names. Lord, if there's somebody else, oh God, that might be feeling, well, you know, I don't fall in that category. Whatever category you may fall in. God is here to fix those situations. He's here to regulate your life. He's just wanting you to be totally committed to him. Lord, this humble servant of yours, this frail uh, mind, this, this frail thought process, God, use us now, Lord, for the expansion of the kingdom of God. As you've 